Question one, briefly describe what is meant by the integration model. Basically, you're, you're intertwining and meshing and embodying your Christian worldview into your professional practice without heavily imposing your agenda. How, how do we marry the two? How do we embody the principles that we, you know, who we are in Christ? How do we embody that without too heavily imposing your agenda? Um, there's a scholarly article that will be cited at the bottom. Uh, Paul W. Loosemore highlighted a few good ways to categorize integration, quoting G.W. Moon in 1997. Uh, the first one was practical integration. So utilizing specific techniques, Christian techniques, to uh, embody the principles without being too heavy handed. Second is personal integration. So the inner life of the therapist. How does the inner life of your spiritual health uh, emanate forth and put forth the message of Christ? Number three, classical integration or soul care. So learning from our spiritual forefathers, basically. Um, what did they do? How did they do it? What can we learn from them? Um, and then lastly, contemporary integration, utilizing research and adhering to professional guilds and associations. What do they do and write? They're relevant. They're in the day-to-day -day with clients. What are they doing right? How can we emulate them? Question two, specific ways that uh, professional counseling can be integrated with the biblical worldview. I think embodying the principles of the faith, right? Courage, hope, love, long suffering. It can allow you to integrate the biblical worldview into your day to day. Uh, Simmons in our textbooks textbook uh, talks about six ethical principles to be led by in counseling: autonomy, non maleficence, beneficence, justice, fidelity, and veracity. Um, I think these are really good principles to embody, to have neutrality in conversation. But honestly, they also have really rich biblical roots. Every single one of these words, you know, it's, 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 it's throughout the Bible. Uh, and I think even the text highlights some of these and it kind of juxtaposes scripture versus, you know, these six ethical principles. So I think that's a really good way uh, for sure. Question three. How do your views align with the integration model? So in the text, uh, David and Twistles or in Twistles model, models of disciplinary relationship, I think, I think it holds true to the allies model. All truth is God's truth. <clears throat> so why parse the two? I mean, psychology, Christianity, I think there's so much to be uh, gleaned and benefited from all of it. So I think we should all, we should marry, we should, we should marry it all, use it all for God's, uh, God's purpose because all truth is God's truth. Number four. What challenges do you, do you foresee in using a Christian integration model? I think, I think the, the first one that came to mind is if you counsel non-Christians, they may be adverse to scriptures that you may want to share, right? So they, they come to you with a situation and they're saying, hey, I'm struggling with this. And you may want to be like, hey, well, the Bible says this. And a lot of times that can actually shut them down and alter the trajectory of the conversation to where originally they may have wanted it to go. Number five, uh, how might code A4... Yeah, point B of the ACA relate to you as you pursue professional counseling. I think it's something to be mindful of throughout, for sure. I mean, uh, according to that, you uh, code A point four point B, you cannot overtly influence um, your own values, your attitudes, beliefs onto the client, and uh, so that's really, really tough for. Um, Christians because we're vocal, right? We live out the gospel. So for some, it may be hard not to project our agenda on the conversation when it comes to if they're going through something tough and, you know, you want to say, hey, let me encourage you with scripture. But, you know, that that is a very delicate line to walk for sure. Uh, lastly, what strategies might you engage in not to impose your own values and attitudes and beliefs? So my psychiatrist coined a term called LVAC, listen, validate, ask, and then comment. I think this is the best way for me and for many people to um, find neutrality in conversation and let the client guide the conversation so they can come to the conclusion that oftentimes is within themselves. They just need help processing and unpacking it. So listen, validate, ask, and then comment at the end if necessary, I think is the best way to not impose your own values. And if they ask, Sure, then you can freely share, but I think LVAC, LVAC, listen, validate, ask, and then comment is just a really good way to go about it.